My name is Jonathan, and we're going to get into worship, but before we do that, I would just like to pray for us. Lord, thank you so much for just the different ways that we can come together as a community uh, to worship and glorify you. And so whether we are worshiping in a home, in a church, or wherever we are, uh, we glorify you. We sing these songs of praise into your name. In Jesus' name, amen.
pierced my heart and taken me over, taken me over. And all I want is to be with you forever. So much sweeter than this.
It's always so great to worship together. And as we continue on in our service, before we hear a message from Pastor John, I want to uh, let you know about this week. This is the first week of October and our small groups that are starting on Tuesday nights. This is an incredible time to come and just further your discipleship in Christ. If you're interested, go to wsfc.info to find out all the information you need and to register. Also, while you're at wsfc.info, uh, you'll see a link there for prayer. If you need prayer or if you just want to have a conversation with one of our pastors, make sure you fill out, uh, follow that link, fill out the forms, and uh, we'll get in contact with you as soon as we can. Uh, this will be a great time now. Uh, if you call this church home and you want to give, follow the links down below. You can give up your tithes and offerings there. And as always, we want to thank you for your generosity. We believe in the work that God is doing in us and through this church. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for what you're doing, Lord, in our hearts and in our church. We pray now that you would speak to us, transform our lives, transform our minds, transform our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, friends. John here. We're jumping back into this message. It's part two. And the reason that is, is because I bit off a, a, a large portion of scripture and a, a massive uh, text, not not in length, it's only three verses long, but there's so much in it that we needed to cover that I just kind of pulled the e-brake last week and I'm gonna pick it up again this week. So welcome. If you need a refresher, I'd encourage you to go back and watch or listen to last week's message to kind of bring you up to speed. What it was, in essence, was a call from your pastor. Hi, I'm John. Um, and also from Pastor Paul from the book of Ephesians to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received, okay? We have been called children of God in the family of God. The first three chapters of Ephesians affirms that solidly, okay? And we, the church, then, as a result of that belief, fundamental, foundational belief, should act like it, okay? So the question we are working through is, how should we behave? How should we behave? What we unpacked last week that we'll build from was we should behave with humility, we should behave with gentleness, with patience, and with understanding, okay? Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to take you to, um, I uh, want to take you to the next really portion of this passage of scripture, and I want to build from that and talk about a few more things that we're to do as a behavior of being a follower of Jesus. And that is first, to behave with love. To behave with love. In verse uh, two, at the very end, it says to bear with one another. We talked about that, but it adds this, this additional couple words, is to bear with one another in love, in love. And, it, and this topic right here, love, is knowingly a topic that we repeat often here at the church. And here's why. It's because it was a topic that the Bible repeats often over and over and over again. Okay, love one another. Love one another. It's all throughout the scripture, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. It actually reminds me of the story of a preacher that stood up in his pulpit and he opened the Bible and he read the words, love one another. He then stood there for what seemed like a few minutes, just silent. And then he closed his Bible and he went and sat down. And they, they dismissed the service and the next week he got up, he opened his Bible and he stood in front of the people there in his pulpit and he said, love one another. And he closed his Bible and he went and sat down. He did it the next week after that. And then after that, for eight weeks straight, he stood up and said, love one another. And after that service, someone pulled him aside and said, preacher, what is going on? 
Why, why aren't you moving on? And here was his reply. Because I'm still waiting for you all to just do that. Because I'm waiting for you all to just do that. Love one another. Jesus said, the world will know if you're my disciple if you love one another. I mean, we're talking about a massive defining mark of, of true Christian discipleship here. And, and sadly, the church has not been good at this. The church of today is actually known more. Surveys tell us uh, that the church is actually known more about what it hates or, or, or the ones that it's against than who we love and, and what we're for. There, there's an author named Anne Lamont, uh, a writer that I, I read a lot of, and she said this, you can safely assume you've created God in your own image when it turns out that God hates all the same people you do. Sit with that for a little bit. A little bit longer. A little bit longer. Okay? Let's move on. Behavior number six. With unity. Behaving with unity. Verse three says it so clearly. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit. Make every effort to keep the unity of the the Spirit. Now, there's a couple things I need to point out in this particular verse. Here's the first thing, is that unity takes work, okay? Make every effort, it says. It's not easy, friends. It's not easy to get or to maintain unity. It's actually very hard work. Uh, those of you that maybe grew up in the, in the 70s, and you, I don't know, there may be some of you that were a part of like a commune or something, you know, like uh, in or around Eugene, Oregon or something, okay? You know that if you're a part of that kind of a community, that it started out all, you know, euphoric and very exciting. But then as the days and weeks and months and perhaps years went on, you know, you know, it just boiled down to plain old work, plain old effort, okay? When you get into a place where you think there's perfect unity, well, you've got to then maintain that. Okay, so unity takes work. Here's the second thing that I see in this verse is that unity is a work of the Spirit. Okay, now it sounds contradictory to what I just said, but it's not at all. Okay, we have to do work. Okay, unity takes work by us, but it also is a work of the Spirit, and this is where a partnership comes in, and the focus here is on discovering our unity within God's spirit rather than trying to find it within our own commonalities or our own shared interests, okay? It, it's kind of like uh, I meet with engaged couples on a regular basis and, and invariably they will say something like, oh, we have so much in common. It's like we're sharing one heart, you know? <laughs> I, I try so hard not to giggle when I hear those things, but you know, it's like we have so much in common. And I can tell you that when they get married, they're gonna be quickly find out that it's not enough to just have commonalities. Oh, it doesn't hurt. It's great to have shared interests, but, but you know, if you've been married for more than five minutes, that marriage, it takes the effort of two people. Okay, but there's also God's component. Marriage is also a work of the Spirit. Okay, so it's Christian unity. Okay, but, but the Christian unity that we're talking about here in this text, the unity of the Spirit, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we have to be, you know, so open-minded that our brains leak out, okay? I mean, I, I, we're not talking about that, that somehow we find this euphoric unity and, and everything's very ecumenical and regardless of what you believe, we can all, you know, I'm not talking about that, okay? It was actually uh, C.K. Chesterton. He famously said this. He says, an open mind is like an open mouth, its purpose is to bite onto something nourishing. Otherwise, it will become like a sewer, accepting any and everything, rejecting nothing. Okay, rejecting nothing. It's like 
when we talked last week, and again, if you didn't watch or listen to last week, go back and spend some time with it. But last week we talked about understanding versus tolerance, okay? And I think there's a way for us as the church to maintain the unity of the spirit, even if we don't agree on everything. Okay, as a matter of fact, I believe we can respect, I believe we can care for those that we profoundly disagree with. I think that's possible. Okay, and you may think you're crazy, no way. Yes, you can respect and care for people that you profoundly disagree with. Okay, it reminds me of a saying that's been around for a very long time. No one is actually certain who, who said it first. Um, our Foursquare denomination, our tribe or family of churches has adopted it as a, as a slogan of our churches as well. But it says, in essentials, unity, In non-essentials, liberty, but in all things, charity. In all things, charity. Now what does charity mean? It means in love. In all things, love. Okay, we should be living a life that is foundationed in love and in unity. And then we come to this last one. It has to do with the behavior of peace. We should behave with peace peace. The scripture says the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Bond. Peace bond. (laughs) I couldn't resist that one. Actually, it's kind of an interesting phrase when you think about it. The bond of peace. Bond of peace. Peace is something that binds us together. In the original language, um, This idea in the Greek language has to do with ligaments that hold the members of the body together. It's pretty cool. In other words, you could say it this way. Peace is what keeps us from going to pieces. Okay, peace is what keeps us from going to pieces. Now, in most, if not all, of Paul's writings, he starts out with this greeting. Grace and peace to you through God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you. Grace and peace. Shalom. Peace. God's wholeness. Inside and out. May it be upon you. Now, this is a cry. I think it's a cry. I think every time the, 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 the people of that day in the first century on up to today would say shalom, it was a cry for, for, for the world to be, to be put back together into wholeness and rightness. And it's a declaration for God's order to come about over the, the, the raging chaos on our planet. His shalom, friends, is what holds us together. It's what comforts us. It's what, it's what heals us. And we desperately, desperately, desperately need the peace of God. We need it now. We need it in this day, at this time. I think you'll agree with me. Okay, we we can be bonded together through the peace of God, not torn apart through all the fear and animosity that rages around us. And I think the church, the church, not just West Salem Foursquare Church, but the global church can be a primary distribution center of peace. Back your trucks on up. Come on. We've got peace. Here it is. We're just distributing it to the world. And don't let, friends, the enemy steal that. Don't let him rob you of that. It's what holds us together. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is what holds us together. And in these times, of, it gets said so often, it feels like a broken record, but in these times of uncertainty and fear, you've heard it. When we are being rocked back and forth on, on the waters of, of fear and uncertainty, it's Jesus, friends, that says to our hearts, the boat of our hearts, the waters of our hearts, he says, peace be still. Peace, be still. So, how, how is the church to behave? These seven characteristics found in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Be humble. Be gentle. Be patient. Be understanding. Be loving. 
be unified, and be peaceable. I want to finish with this, and I want to answer the why question. Why should we do all this? Well, verse 4 through 6 in Ephesians 4 gives it to us pretty plainly. He says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Let's pray. God, I ask for this um, simple thing to take place, and that is that your word would be planted and grow in us. May we not just be hearers of the word, but may we become and begin to become doers also. That we wouldn't give just moral assent to this, but we would say, how can I live this out? How can I behave in this way? Give us tangible steps, albeit baby steps, Lord, where we just move forward. We can't conquer this all in a day. This is a lifetime by your grace and by your spirit of living more and more like Jesus. And so as you're forming this community, this community of West Salem Foursquare, this community that has people watching online, people attending, this community that's a part of a larger community, faith communities all around our city and valley and beyond, all around the world. Lord, we're part of something bigger, one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father. And we look to you now to give us peace, to unify our hearts, to pour out love in us so that we can be distributors of that love to the people around us. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. If you're watching this or listening to this and you are interested in making Jesus Lord of your life, you want to surrender your heart to God, um, you know, the Bible even tells us so clearly that the, the greatest love we've ever been shown is through Christ. And uh, when we talk about loving people, that love, it comes from God, First John says. And so if you would like to have uh, the love of God in your heart and you want to become a Christian, today, wherever you're at, you can just pray. You can say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Jesus, make me brand new. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I repent and I return to you. You can pray that or something similar to that. And and if you'd like to talk to somebody or get some information about that prayer or making a decision to follow Jesus, or you may have said yes to Jesus, you can just text this number and this word on the screen right now, and we will connect with you and give you some resources to begin your journey. The Lord bless you. Have a great day.